Hi, my name is Patty and I work at the Eastern Gateway Community College Library. I'm going to do a brief tutorial on how to format an APA paper in Word. APA formatting has some general guidelines that we must adhere to when creating a paper. It must be on 8.5 by 11 paper with 1 inch margins all around. This is the default setting for Word, so we don't need to really worry about changing that. It should be double spaced and the font should be Times New Roman with a 12 point font size. There is a title page in an APA paper, a reference page at the end for references, and on very rare occasions an abstract. The first line of each paragraph should be indented one half inch and there should be a header with a page number to the right. To open a new Word document, click on the Start Menu button. Click on Word. A new blank document will appear or you might need to click on blank document. Make sure the home tab is selected on the ribbon. The first thing we are going to do is set the font and font size. Click the down arrow next to the font box and select Times New Roman from the drop down menu. It's an alphabetical list so it's almost at the very bottom. Click the down arrow next to the font size box and select 12 from the drop down menu. Now we are going to change the spacing of the paper. Click the Paragraph Dialog Box Launcher symbol in the corner of the Paragraph group on the ribbon. A Paragraph Dialog Box will appear. Make sure the Indents and Spacing tab is selected. In the Spacing section, use the arrows to select 0 before and 0 after. In the Line Spacing section, click the down arrow and select Double. Click OK. Right now, only the body of our paper is Times New Roman 12 point, and we want that to be the default for our entire paper. So we hover the mouse over Normal in the Styles group and right-click. If we left-click, all of the settings that we just made will revert to the default, and we will have to start all over again with font, font size, and spacing. So make sure that you right-click. Select Update Normal to match selection. The new 7th edition of APA makes more allowances for font and font size than the previous edition. I showed Times New Roman 12 point, but you can use Calibri, Arial, and Georgia all at 11 point. So now we can create the title page header. Click the Insert tab on the ribbon and click Header in the Header and Footer group. From the drop down menu, click on Blank, and the Header and Footer Tools tab will now be displayed on the ribbon. APA requires a cover page, so unless told not to create one by your instructor, the first page of your document should be a cover page. APA used to require the words running head and a title on the header of the title page, but the newest version of APA, that is only required for professional level papers. Student papers now have the same header throughout the entire paper, and it is just a page number on the right side. We need to add the page number to the header, so click Page Number in the Header and Footer group, select Top of Page, and Plain Number 3 from the menu. Close the header by clicking the red X in the Header and Footer Contextual tab. We can now complete our title page. Click the Center button to center the text. Because the title page text should sit in the middle of the paper, hit the Enter button three or four times. With the new changes to APA, the title should now be in bold font, so click on the bold icon in the font group. Type the title of your essay. The title should not be underlined, italicized, all in caps, or in quotations. All words of the title should start with a capital letter, except for articles like A, AN, AND, and THE. Click the bold icon again to deselect it. Hit Enter twice. Now type your name and Eastern Gateway Community College, hitting Enter after each line. One of the new changes to APA is now we add the course number and name. We hit Enter and then add the name of your instructor. And then on the next line, the due date. Now we need to insert a page break. That will ensure that our spacing will remain intact between each of our breaks, no matter what changes we make to the preceding section. Go to the Layout tab, click Break, 
select page, and this will automatically begin a second page. Center the title below the header by clicking the center button in the paragraph group and click bold in the font group. Again, type in the full title as you did on the cover page. Press enter to move the cursor to the next line. Click the left alignment button and click the bold icon again to deselect it. Indent the beginning of each paragraph one half inch using the tab key. This is where you will type the body of your paper. For demonstration purposes, let's move on to the reference page where you will document the resources you used in your paper. Hit enter a few times and insert a new page break by going once again to layout, breaks, and page. Make sure you're on the home tab on the ribbon. Click the center button in the paragraph group and the bold button in the font group. Type references. It should not be underlined in all caps, italicized, or in quotations. Press enter to move the cursor to the next line. Click the left alignment button and the bold icon again to deselect it. References should have a hanging indentation, so select the paragraph dialog box launcher in the paragraph group. A paragraph dialog box will appear. Make sure the indents and spacing tab is selected and locate the indentation section. Click the down arrow directly below Special. Select Hanging from the drop-down menu. The box to the right under the word By should read half an inch. If it does not, use the spin arrows to change it to that setting. Click on OK. Start to type your references. Make sure that they are double spaced with no extra space between the entries. They should be alphabetized by the first word in the citation. If you are pasting your references in, you might need to add the hanging indent or the double spacing to the pasted reference by highlighting it and applying the changes. Once you have set up your paper, make sure you save it to the correct location. Click the File tab on the ribbon and click Save As on the menu that appears on the left. Click the Browse button if you're going to save it somewhere on the computer. A Save As dialog box will appear. At that point, choose where to save your document, whether it is Documents, a flash drive, or your desktop. If the computer doesn't belong to you, make sure to save it somewhere in the cloud or on a flash drive. If you save it to the cloud, you're going to need to save it to the computer first. If you've already typed out your paper but haven't started formatting yet, that's not a problem. All you need to do is go through, select all of the text, including the headers, and make the necessary changes to font, font size, spacing, and what's in the header themselves.